to uh, chat with the man that has his wonderful autobiography out. It is a superb piece of stuff, and I'm going to discuss it with him. We welcome Alex James. I was saying only earlier that if, uh, if you, um, for instance, if you have a shelf at home, all you need is a Wilburys DVD and this book. That's because great. that really is all you need for the yeah. moment. If you have a shelf without these things, it's not a shelf. But let's go back to the beginning of your, of your, uh, of your book. What made you decide to, to write your autobiography? Well, I'd sort of, I suppose uh, I got married, and uh, that's kind of, uh, it's a new beginning. It was sort of the end of rock and roll and the start of something else. And it's a kind of rock and roll memoir, I suppose. It is. It's very, yes. it's very funny. I mean, it's, it's written. It's nine yards. It's fun to read, which I think is an important part of it. You know, it's like it's. Well, it's a comedy, really, mm. I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost a tragedy. How, how, was it hard to write the truth about people while they were still alive? Um, well, I think the people that I care about I've been nice about, and um, the ones I don't, well. Yeah. No, I mean, no, it's not, it's not a nasty book at all. So. Yeah. It's a sort of rollicking, uh, picaresque. It is a rollicking read. Do, did you, um, out of interest, did, did you, how did you manage to remember a lot of the different things? If, as you say, you were the drunkest member of second the drunkest, drunkest, second drunkest member of the drunkest band in Britain, in the world maybe, how did you record it? Did you keep a diary? What did you do? I did look, I did look at my diaries, but they all seem to have been written by a drunken idiot. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it's, it's sort of like, uh, it, does, it did all come fl flooding back, actually. You can cut, you see, when you've been in a band, you can cut, I, I, well, I tend to try to, I tend to recall things by what single we had out at the time. So, that, so there's a sort of, yeah. that was the, that was how I remembered yeah, it. Point. Well, speaking mm. of singles that you had out at the time, of course, there, I think there was a moment which you write about in here, when there were sort of chart battles with you. Chart and battles, Oasis. record wars. Yeah, fantastic, you know, a bit of press. I mean, you know, which it is, it's sort of an invention of the press, this Imagine you come out sort of dressed as knights and running around. But you did get to number one <laughs> yes. and, uh, at this time, and, you, and suddenly your fame sort of went from being just a, another band into sort of a. a, a yeah, it did time, get a bit silly it? around that time, didn't it? Yeah. There was all of a sudden there were spaceships and prime ministers and. Uh, yeah. yeah. All wanting to be your friend. Yeah. All at the same time. Can we have a look mm. at. We've got a little bit of footage. Let's just have a look at that for a second. Of course, you end up, you do live in the country, you know. What it's, made you decide to leave the city life behind you? I think it's inevitable, really. It's a sort of, for a certain species of rock gentleman. You, you, can't, you can't avoid the trout farm phase, you know. Yeah. I've just got to make the most of it, really. Yeah. No, it's quite right, exactly. It's a natural progression. Yes. Uh, the other question is, would Blur make another album, do you think? Um, it'd be a shame to think we wouldn't, but uh, don't hold your breath. Okay. I'll take that as a... a maybe. Yes. <laughs> will you write another book? Well, I definitely will, yeah. I liked it. Mm. Well, I will read them both. <laughs> all, all of them. So thank you very much for joining us. Alex James. Thank you, James.